everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing fantastically well. So if you're new here, my name is Jason. I'm a trader. I'm interested in the prop firm industry space and giving advice and tips to everybody to make sure they can get funded, especially if you are looking to go through the prop firm challenges. Now, prop firms in 2024, there are plenty out there. It's definitely going to be the biggest year by far for all of these firms. And to take advantage of them, you need to have some ground rules to make sure you understand more trading, understand yourself and the principles behind getting funded. Everyone says it's easy, but the reality is it's not. If you're new here, check out my previous video on the top five prop firms in my opinion. And as always, I'll put links in the description below so you can click on them and go straight to their websites. Unfortunately, there is no magic one way saying do this and you will pass. Unfortunately, that's a lie and I would not be responsible if I came out and told you that. It takes hard work, dedication and a little bit of knowledge as well. And again, these tips are not just for passing prop firms, it's for trading in general. So make sure you watch to the end because lots of tips to make sure you are successful and managing your risk. So the first thing I say is because there's plenty of prop firms out there, you want to choose the one that is right for you. Now there are ones that do single phase challenges, they do multiple phases, two or three. You can have a direct funding or you can have scaling. So you really want to go through all of the prop firms and find what works for you. It's not just those, it's making sure that you've got the ability to run EAs if you want to, copy trader, be able to trade the news, what particular style you have, whether it's hedging as an example, that's banned on some prop firms, or martingale trading is also banned by some prop firms. So make sure that the strategy and style that you have is 100% supported by the prop firms. Again, ask them in advance, if I trade like this, will I get funded? Uh, don't make the mistake of just choosing the same prop firm that everyone else is doing, because it may not be the right one for you. Now, the next one is probably key for all trading. Make sure you have a strategy, make sure you have an edge. If you are taking these challenges, obviously you need to hit certain percentage targets. And if your trading strategy is high frequency scalping, but obviously there's a drawdown to that, therefore you could have a big risk, that strategy may not work for these prop firms. And again, if you have a swing trader and you are looking to get big returns, but over a very, very long period of time, again, make sure that works and we're able to pass the challenges. By all means, go and get a demo. A lot of these firms offer a evaluation period where you can actually go and do it for free with no money outlay and make sure that you're able to go through, check out dashboards, check out, make sure that you are able to get the percentages and your strategy is working. Because if your strategy doesn't work, don't just go and pick another one to try and pass it. Make sure that you are 100% confident in your strategy and it has worked over a long period of time through all market conditions. So before you sign up with Prop Firm, make sure you choose the right level of account for yourselves. Now, it's very easy to get carried away and say, I want to do a $100,000 account, $200,000 account, because that's what everybody else is doing. That may not be right for you. It might not be the correct stage in your journey as a trader. It might be you need to start, let's say, a $10,000 account. One, that's the only equity you've got to actually buy a challenge. And also, that's the level of money you're comfortable trading. As we know that when you start getting into trading bigger accounts, bigger lot sizes, bigger things, the risks become bigger, the emotional roller coaster becomes bigger. So just make sure that you are comfortable at the right level. Because if you are not, then very quickly the, the losses will accumulate and before you know it, you have actually violated the rules and you failed the challenge. So if you go for a lower challenge, it might be a case if you pass that one and you grow as a trader, you're able to take those profits and then buy additional challenges to actually get up to the level of equity that you actually believe you need to be at to make a good living. When you start out with any of these challenges, make sure you have a clear plan. What are you going to trade? When are you going to trade it? How are you going to trade it? Not just jump around because you think that price is moving in one particular instrument and therefore you must be trading that one. If, again, if that doesn't suit your style and your plan and your strategy, walk away. There is no time limit on these challenges now. You don't have to rush to do it. There's no bonus points for passing it in one or two days, even though you can do it on a lot of the prop firms and get funded. It's just an ego trip. Don't do it. Take your time, have a plan. If your plan says that you are a swing trader and you need to wait for end of day signals to come along and it might take you two weeks to get a good trade, that one trade might run for 10, 15%. Just wait for it. Have a plan and stick to it. Sticking to a plan is very hard to do, especially when the, the emotions get involved. But if you do that, you will be successful, not just in prop firm challenges, but trading overall. So where challenges used to be 30 days or 60 days for phase two, there was always that pressure to actually achieve the targets in that particular time scale. Now they're unlimited, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. It takes some of the pressure away to be able to have a bad day, take a break, come back to it when you're fresh, rather than thinking that I need to pass this by a certain date, you can actually walk away. 
So again, don't rush it, take your time, have it in your plan. If it means taking a week off just to get your head clear before starting again, whether you've had a very successful couple of days, take some time off, or a few bad days, take some time off. There's no rush, take your time, and you'll find that the more time you give to trading, the more time you're actually able to analyze and study it, the better the trades will come, and therefore potentially the quicker you will pass. Now one thing as traders, we don't often like to talk about it. I'm probably an exception, because I'm out on YouTube talking about it all the time. But if you're sitting at home, you're there in front of your computer screen and everything else, you're not really going on about, I'm making this trade or doing that. One thing is people often don't understand it and potentially will laugh at you because of it, but don't feel embarrassed because you're a trader. Join some of the prop firm Discord channels, look at some of their Telegram groups. There's plenty of other Telegram groups out there where you can get in there and chat, discuss things, whether it's trade ideas. No matter what you think you're going through, the chances are that everybody else is going through the same things, the emotions, the roller coasters, the good days, the bad days, etc. So discuss it, get out there, have a community. You might find that you get to meet more people and actually have a better understanding of trading by discussing trade ideas and just being more vocal about it. The more you're able to discuss it and express it, the more you'll enjoy it and the better you will become. So for me, this could be one of the biggest takeaways for trading and that is risk management. We know that all these prop firm challenges have really hard to find rules. If you break the daily drawdown rules, let's say of 5% or the max overall drawdown of 10% as an example, you will fail regardless. There is no coming back from that. You cannot go in and say, well, I had a bad day. CPI data came out. I didn't realize it was going to be moving that quickly. I didn't have a stop loss in place, etc. They will not buy it. Make sure your risk manager is key. Make sure you understand how much you are risking per trade and the correct lot sizes to trade for that particular instrument and that particular trade. Now, if you don't understand it, there's plenty of tutorials and videos out there actually getting into risk management and scaling so you understand exactly what you're doing. And that goes back to one of the first points is know your strategy, know your trading style, and make sure that you can place trades correctly so you're not exposing yourself to too much risk. It could be that you end up placing three, four, five trades at any one particular time. And again, your maximum exposure per risk could be well in excess of the 5% daily drawdown rule. And if that all goes against you, whether it's a news article, you could be wiped out completely. So understand your risk. Don't place any more than 1% risk per trade, preferably half a percent. Let your winning trades run, cut your losing trades short, and make sure you are in a good position to be in this for long term and not just the short term boom and bust. And if you are successful, and again, I say if, because we know from the statistics, only sort of between seven and 10% people actually pass these challenges, which is quite a small percentage. But then we also know in trading that 70 to 75 or even 80% of people never make any money at all. So it's not just the challenges that are difficult, it's trading in general is difficult. But if you are successful in passing, do not feel impulsive to go out there and think, I'm now the greatest trader in the world. Don't think suddenly that you are utopia, you are the best thing. Take it slow, be prepared to have some losses along the way and make sure you're then able to gain and get some payouts. The worst thing is whether it's passing phase one or phase two, whatever it is, you have that joy, that euphoria, that confidence that comes with it. You're just one step towards the journey. And as I've been around for a long time in trading, I know that people will come and go and don't be one of those. Make sure it's for the long term. Make sure you do not get overconfident, over successful too quickly, because we've seen that as well, is people get very, very big payouts and withdrawals. They go and spend that money on something luxurious, flamboyant, and then the next month, they assume they're going to get the same payout. The reality is they're going to blow their account, and before you know it, they are back into a negative situation. They can't sell their assets and therefore they've got nothing out of their success. It's a long-term game. Don't do it for the short term. Be successful, be safe, and just make sure you understand all what is out there when you get into trading because it is a great career. It is a great thing to get into. And if you are able to stick to these simple rules, then I believe you will be successful. So thanks for watching everybody and I'll catch you again soon. Cheers.